Good afternoon, I'm Spot On Weather Meteorologist Matthew Euler, and here is today's version of the Long Range, 23 December 2016. So let's get right to it. Let's take a look at what's going on across uh, the major uh, long wave pattern as well as the surface charts. All right, we're, so we're going to start it off with next Tuesday, the 27th of December 2016. And what we have going on at that time is we do have a weak front off to the north of southeast Virginia with a little bit of scattered rain shower activity back over western Virginia, eastern Kentucky, and west Virginia at that time. So we do have a weak front to the north. Uh, it will push in through the area Tuesday evening and will result in a slight cool down in temperatures on Wednesday. But I do want to emphasize there's nothing arctic um, as far as the nature of the cooler air. Um, it's going to just be a cool down to more seasonal values for Wednesday. And I'll show you the chart for Wednesday here in a minute. Uh, looking at the long wave um, jet stream level 30,000 foot chart on the right, uh, we have a strong jet stream maximum or a jet streak that's blowing in towards the Pacific Northwest. A uh, deep upper level low situate off of Southern California over the Eastern Pacific. And then the main flow of the jet stream is from Southwest to Northeast. We do have a little bit of indications of the southeastern uh, ridge, upper level ridge. Um, you can see the orientation of the greatest uh, rising of heights there offshore over the western Atlantic. But nonetheless, it will bring up the heights a little bit on Tuesday. So we still will be fairly mild on Tuesday ahead of that next cold front to the north. So we expect highs to be um, 60 to 62 degrees on Tuesday out ahead of that next cold front. Looking at Wednesday the 28th of December, uh, the cold front does move through, but then it kind of just dissipates to the south of uh, southeast Virginia. Again, a cooler day, Wednesday the 28th. Nothing extreme, though. Uh, we expect temperatures to cool back down to the uh, middle to upper 40s, slightly below the normal high of 51 degrees for this time of year in southeast Virginia. We have a nice high-pressure system overhead, which will dry things out nicely for Wednesday the 28th. Um, you look at the jet stream configuration, the jet stream is now pointed from just south of the Gulf of Alaska into the Pacific Northwest, and then another jet axis develops, becoming more zonal west to east across southeast Virginia and the mid-Atlantic region. Uh, you notice how we look at the differences between the 27th, this ridge is a little bit more um, built as compared to the 28th where that ridge is squashed as, a, as the flow becomes more zonal with the jet stream at that time. I do want you to focus in on this upper level low up here over uh, north central Canada. With time, you will see it will become a major player in directing colder, much colder air into the lower 48 states, eventually towards southeast Virginia. Moving on to Thursday, the 29th of December, uh, we do have an area of shower activity just offshore. Um, could have some scattered rain showers as the next more substantial, stronger cold front is to the north. If I zoom in on this, you can see the blue thickness lines. Uh, this is the 540 line, the first blue line, 540 decameter line. Uh, and then you have 534 and 528, a tightening of the thickness gradient indicating a stronger frontal system is about to come through the area. An area of low pressure over eastern Canada with some snow showers downwind of some of the Great Lakes as well as up into the New England states. But this front is going to be the first of a major cool down and start to um, lead to a more of a pattern change across southeast Virginia from slightly above normal temperatures, fairly mild, to uh, much colder, below normal temperatures again. Now again, pay attention to this upper level low feature over central Canada. Look at your jet stream axis now and compare the two from Wednesday the 28th. You can see it starting to move more of a northwest to southeast orientation uh, from the Gulf of Alaska, but now look at the 29th. Uh, it's starting to um, bump up a little bit higher and become more uh, strengthening, first of all, the polar front jet, but also the orientation is going to become more amplified over time. All right, so now Friday the 30th December for southeast Virginia, that cold front, the Arctic cold front, will have blown through on Thursday evening. And we expect a drying out of the atmosphere, but we also expect very uh, low thickness values. We're dropping down to just between 528 and 522 decameter thickness over southeast Virginia. There is some snow shower activity in the Appalachians back over West Virginia into Pennsylvania, up into New York State, Vermont, New Hampshire. 
Uh, we do have a 1032 millibar high situated over Arkansas. So the clockwise flow around that high behind this Arctic cold front is going to direct northwesterly winds into southeast Virginia once again. Zooming back out and looking over at the overall uh, amplification of this jet stream, the polar front jet, take a look at how amplified this is becoming. There's a ridge now orientating itself more southwest to northeast into western Canada, pretty much becoming north-south the flow of the jet stream over western Canada where there's a cold up here. Look at this upper level low getting more pronounced by the day. The flow of the polar front jet stream from the northwest in through the Dakotas, Iowa, Illinois, southern Indiana into Kentucky. You can see that this cold air is starting to dump into the base of that trough. Therefore we have lower thickness values. There you see that trough really over the mid-Atlantic. The polar front jet stream is sagging further south and becoming more amplified more energized with jet streaks passing through the jet core itself. So we do expect colder air to be funneling down into the base of this trough. Counterclockwise flow around this upper level low will direct northwesterly winds. You can see the wind vectors are from the northwest here, which is going to bring in much colder air. Now New Year's Eve, I know a lot of folks have plans again on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve as of right now looks dry as we have a 1029 millibar high in the area of Southeast Virginia with a dry air mass in place. Um, at this point, it looks like it's a transition and we are gonna have a brief warm up um, after this high slides off the coast, which we expect to happen on New Year's Eve itself. The winds will then go a little bit from the Southwest. We'll, we'll basically the clockwise flow around the high will bring Southwest winds up into Southeast Virginia. You can see the next cold front, the Arctic front is gathering strength out over the Midwest. Um, you see an area of snow from um, upper and lower peninsula of Michigan, Wisconsin, Illinois, Iowa. This is the leading edge of much colder air coming down from Canada. The orientation of the polar front jet, uh, you see this ridge now starting to orientate itself more south to north, vice north, uh, southwest to northeast. So we're bumping, we're building this heights up here into western Canada and Alaska, which is going to dislodge colder air from Canada into the lower 48. This trough is becoming way more pronounced, a long wave trough with the jet stream, and we have a lot of energy with this jet. Look at the upper level low to the north of Minnesota now. It has dropped further south, directing the much colder air into the lower 48. But it looks good for your New Year's Eve across southeast Virginia overall with a high pressure in the area. Uh, we do expect the winds to shift around. This will be a transition day, New Year's Day itself, as that energy um, with this Arctic front starts moving east-southeast, the high pressure moves off to the uh, east, and then we get another area of low pressure that develops uh, just south of Long Island at 996 millibars. A lot of rain, a lot of moisture. Now this could be a heavy rain event on New Year's Day. That's the way it looks right now with the transition to snow further west into the Arctic air over West Virginia, um, Pennsylvania, New York State. So uh, it's something to keep an eye on. You can see lower thickness values. Uh, we're looking at about 510 decameter thickness all the way down into southern Illinois, southern Indiana, Ohio. So much colder air is starting to spill south. And it's no surprise based on the orientation of this upper level low, counterclockwise flow, and the strong jet max on the back side of this deepening this trough over the central U.S. And that push of cold air is moving east-southeast towards the east coast by New Year's Day. Looking at 2 January, what we expect is the Arctic air to remain in place. Um, very cold day on the 2nd of January still. Uh, the moisture in the front are now well offshore um, with the rain. Uh, we do have a 1037 millibar high all the way down around Corpus Christi, Brownsville area of South Texas. So that just shows you how far the cold's gonna extend south all the way down to central Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, in fact. Uh, the jet stream, you can see how amplified things are. This is a huge ridge over Western Canada with almost a north, northwest to south, southeast component of the jet axis right into the upper Midwest, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana. And the upper level low, again, that becomes a major player as far as directing the cold air on its backside down into the lower 48. So this could get really interesting this time period. I will admit, uh, based on these jet streaks and jet maximums rotating through an anomalous, anomalously deep uh, upper level trough, it usually leads to coastal storm development, so we're going to have to keep an eye on this to see if that actually comes to fruition. Now looking at the 3rd of January, 
we have a 1037 millibar high. Cold air still in place. Our thicknesses are still fairly low. So we expect dry conditions as of now, but again, we have to keep an eye on things. Um, the jet, the jet max configuration in a deep trough along the east coast in the winter time can yield a storm rather quickly, a uh, coastal storm. And if we get any kind of precipitation into the cold air, it's most likely to be wintry form type precip such as ice or snow. So we'll keep an eye on things here at Spot On Weather for you. The 4th of January, a weak upper level disturbance, uh, 1,016 millibar low around Lake Huron with snow shower activity over the upper Midwest and the Ohio River Valley. Uh, again, we're looking dry at this point in time, but still cold. And then you see another uh, shot of cold air coming down, a 1041 millibar high, situated over North Dakota. It's going to direct some colder air south again from Canada into the lower 48. Temperature comparisons at 5,000 feet, and again, I hinted on this yesterday on the video, just showing you the differences and how cold the temperatures become. So this is today, the 23rd of December. Um, not as cold. Uh, there's no oranges and yellows on this one, which indicates negative 32 to negative 36 degrees Celsius temperatures at 5,000 feet. That's not the case as much on the 23 December currently as compared to the 1st of January where you can really see how this cold air and this, this upper level trough, the long wave trough is really starting to direct the cold air southward again into the United States. These oranges and yellows indicate temperatures between negative 28 and negative 36 degrees Celsius. So temperatures are getting colder again in Canada, which is our source region for cold, cold temperatures, especially into the uh, winter months, January and February. So long range final thoughts, I'll leave you with these. The beginning of a transition to a colder weather pattern starts on 30 December. That's going to be the first shot of colder Arctic air in the southeast Virginia. The polar front jet stream becomes more amplified, more northwest to southeast orientation from Canada into the United States and that's going to weaken or flatten the southeastern ridge which usually brings us milder temperatures. Milder with rain on New Year's Day ahead of the next Arctic front. That looks like our quick brief warm-up day. And then temperatures plummet again on 2 January as another Arctic front moves through southeastern Virginia. Highs will be down to the middle to upper 30s and lows in the 20s, um, 2nd of January with that Arctic shot of cold air. A reloading pattern of cold air from Canada seems likely through middle January. And I just showed you that temperature map here. This is the reloading that's starting to happen again, similar to what we had in December. And we're watching for any signs of wintry precipitation in conjunction with the cold Arctic air. It could yield our first snow or wintry mix of the season in early January, so we'll keep our eyes out on that. And climatology, as a reminder, typically favors winter storms in southeast Virginia in the January and February time frames. So, um, just some final thoughts really quick again. We're going to be going to a colder pattern. Uh, it's looking more and more likely. We'll have to keep an eye on things as far as wintry precip, any coastal lows type development into that colder air. But that's all I have for right now. Uh, remember, we're spot on weather, and if, we, if we're not right, if we're not doing it right, we're not being spot on, are we? So everybody have a great afternoon, and enjoy your holidays. Happy holidays, everybody.